Hi everyone, and sorry it's been so long. It's been a couple of weeks since I last posted a video, but I wanted to catch up and show you something that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. It's actually a, a VR experience that I wanted to make um, for my daughter, actually. She's um, got some things that she's working on at school, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could take some of those things, put them in a, a VR experience, which might be a little bit more engaging and hopefully assist in learning. So let's have a look at the project and I'll show you what's going on. So I want to give a big shout out and thank you to the following people. Virtual Mind, Won Fyung Choi, Bit Victim, Javon Poulter, William C. Tuttle, VR Animated, Eli L, Exodus, Harold Gunderson, David Blissett and Brief Flabin. I want to say thank you so much for your support on Patreon. It's really helping me continue making this channel awesome and delivering new content. So thank you very much. So as I mentioned in the intro, um, my daughter's been struggling with a few things at school. Uh, she's only eight, but um, there's some words that she's been trying to spell and, and uh, some maths as well, like the three and four times table that she's working on at the moment. And she does brilliantly. Um, but the school said if there's, you know, work on it at home over the summer holidays, just to improve on those things. And uh, I didn't really want to like sit at like the kitchen table and make her write out like the three and four times tables because that's kind of boring. And so I thought, what well, wouldn't it be cool if we could get that into VR? Because I've, as a responsible parent, I've introduced her to VR early, and I, um, I thought if I could get like an experience that she could relate to in VR that was also has some puzzles around those subjects and topics then it might help her in some way and um, so she's crazy about horses so what I've done is created this um, stable environment it's very contained it's just this one area here uh, designed to look like something you might see in star stable I don't know if you're familiar with that um, it's like a, an online horse game where you run around and do adventures so it's done in a slightly cartoony style in terms of the artwork and at the moment I've got two puzzles one still in development but one is pretty cool it's where there'll be some horses in these stalls and you will have to come to the stall and there'll be a button on here which will read read out the name to you and then there'll be some letters on the desk in the end then you have to put the horse's name on the front of the stall and all that's pulled in through um, JSON. So I've got the, like, this horse data here, very simple, so I can easily add to it. Uh, and then at runtime, it picks three of these names at random and populates the stalls here. I want to try and get some text to speech working as well. So um, I can automatically read out whatever words are put in the horse data. So I can just add to it easily over time rather than having to have some logic where I record the name of the horse as it just kind of becomes pointless having it in the JSON file. What I want to, what I'll do now is if I jump into VR and I can show you how some of these puzzles are working. Okay, so here we are in VR and you can see that on runtime it's populated all our puzzles uh, and we're currently standing in front of the stall and this is just like my temporary hand for the moment but the environment's looking pretty sweet and we can see all around you. Um, it's using a trim sheet for all of the texture, texturing really, um, especially particularly the walls, um, the floor and all the, all the stalls as well. So very efficient. And the idea is that you would have to press a button here somewhere to hear what the horse's name is and the horse will be here. And then you would have to pick the right letters and put them in the right order. I've got no idea what uh, I've picked here. I think it's certainly beginning with an R. So there's some kind of subtle clues. So like the first letter is a capital. So you pick up the letter, pop it in, and it, you get you get some feedback. So I know this is right because I put in a green light there for a minute, but it'll probably be something different, like a tick or something that represents that that's the right answer. You can take these out. The light will go out. Question mark will come back on. Put in a wrong letter. And you know, you try again. They can keep going until you get it right. Uh, I have no idea what this horse's name is. I'm gonna to have to look at the puzzle. Let's just guess. Oh, oh, hang on, I think it might be Rose. S E. 
then I should get some feedback in the console saying that the puzzle is complete. And I can go ahead, you can still go ahead and take them out, but I, you can deactivate them once the puzzle's complete. But you can see it knows what the right answer is and um, it constantly monitors that. Rezo. There we go. And you'd have to do that for all three horses and then you get some reward, like I don't know, maybe pat the horse or something. And then you can go into the second puzzle, which I think is going to be it'll be a math based puzzle. Maybe that a notice board here and there'll be a sum on it about how many treats you have to feed the horse or put in their food bucket, something like that. So that's actually how it's all working and put together. I thought it'd be cool to show you how the name puzzles are working because uh, it's pretty neat. So there's a couple of things that happen. First of all, the puzzle gets set up and this is done in the name puzzle setup script. And if I open that up in Visual Studio and quickly run through it with you. So this script is responsible for setting up the puzzle. And uh, we've got some variables here at the top. Uh, and then on enable, it's waiting for the horse information to be loaded. It's getting all that JSON data in. Once the JSON data has loaded, we're going to generate some answer locations. So it generates the answer locations. So what that does is it creates an array, a 2D array of transforms, like a grid, that are the positions for where the answers are going to go, that, which are those squares with the letters on. So it gets all the transforms for that. And then we get a horse name at random. So obtain a horse name. So we access our game manager to get a horse name. And that all that's simply doing is going through the JSON, getting a random position, pulling out the name, and then it removes that name so that we can't use it again for this run. And then it passes it back. And then we go through our generate nameplate locations. So now we know the name of the horse. It creates the, the locations on the front of the stall. And these are like the snap zones, if you like. It gets, gets a right position, instantiates that nameplate, gives that nameplate, that game object, um, a name. And that name is the character for that particular position. And then we do a little bit of repositioning because um, some of the names are all different lengths. We always want the name to be in the middle of the stall. So if it's like six, we don't want it to start in a certain position and then look off center. So we do a little bit of calculation to bring it just back in line. So even if like, the horse name has four characters, it's always going to be in the position of the stall in the center. So then the next method does two things. This is generating the answer letters. So it goes through, it creates a list here of used characters. And then we use a for each loop to go through each character in our horse name. We need to make sure that the answers that are populated are actually the answers relevant to our chosen horse name. So then it goes through each character in our horse name. So say like for instance, it was Rose a second ago. It would go through each character in the name Rose, which is four times. So this loop's going to iterate around four times. And for each one, it's going to create a random angle to put the nameplate on the table. It's going to get a spawn point, which is our 2D array from that trans grid transform. It's then going to instantiate a plate and the plate is the thing you pick up with the letter on it. It's going to give it a name and it's going to give it a parent. And then we put the correct character onto that plate. So we we get hold of the instantiated plate, get hold of the text element and just copy the um, character in and then we add that character to a use character list just so we can monitor that. So that this part of this method creates the answers that we know we need that are for the right horse name. And then this section needs to create the remaining characters. Uh, and these are just randomly generated characters ranging from A to Z that populate the rest of the answer characters on the table. So that, that's like the, the little bit of a, the puzzle setup if you like. We also then have the name puzzle logic. This is then checking what's been placed inside the snap zone, if it's the right letter or if it's not the right letter. This is all the logic for that. So actually quite a lot going on, even for a simple little puzzle game like that. A lot of logic involved on checking whether it's the right answer or it's incorrect and then giving the user some feedback. But all done through kind of free scripts. We've got the initial puzzle set up and then you've got the logic of that puzzle as the answers are being placed in. 
And then if we take a look in the prefabs folder for this, you see I've got a name nameplate pickup and also a nameplate location. The nameplate location has the name puzzle script attached to it. But just thought it'd be cool for you to see what I've been working on um, and how VR can be used, not only for gaming, but also for educational purposes as well and making things really fun and engaging and immersive and hopefully assisting in kind of that knowledge retention by making it fun and engaging. So hoping it works. I think the first thing she said when she saw this was, can she ride the horses? Um, which made me panic a little bit. So this is actually, I'm going to put this on uh, my Patreon page so you can have access to the project and have a play around with how the puzzle systems are working and maybe use it in some of your own games in some way. So there we go. I really hope you enjoyed the video and you liked seeing what I've been working on over the last couple of weeks and it's given you some inspiration for maybe some of your own games or experiences that you want to make, whether it's gaming or for learning. This week was going to be a continuation of my Make a Game in VR series, which was the Wild West game that we were making together. And uh, we still will definitely finish it, but due to the tragedy in Plymouth a few days ago, um, I thought it was probably a little bit inappropriate and would probably just leave that for a second and come back to it in the not too distant future. So apologies to all of you that were waiting for that video. It is coming. Um, but probably not quite the right time and would be a little bit insensitive given that I'm only kind of 15 minutes away down the road from where that tragedy took place. So um, again, apologies, but it is coming. Um, just bear with me, um, but want to make sure it's the right time. So I thought this video would fill that gap and hopefully you can see what we're working on, hopefully give you some inspiration. And as I say, projects on my Patreon page, so you can take a look at it, all the artwork's free, so you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and all, all the logic for the code as well. You can use it as you wish. But thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.